Hello everyone, me Speed here with another Rising Hub video. First of all, I just want to say thanks for the feedback and responses on the last video. It was really awesome to see and I did get a lot of people comment saying they didn't know the game was back again. So I'm glad I managed to get a few more people knowing about the game, you know, to let a few more people know about it. Also, I'd like to thank you guys again because I actually reached the milestone of 3,000 subscribers a few days ago. So, yeah, that's also pretty amazing. It means a lot to me. I'll probably make a video for reaching 3K, but at the moment, I don't have any ideas completely set in stone. So, if you guys have any ideas for a video like that, then I'll be sure to take them into consideration. So, very quickly, I did say last time that I'd explain my downtime why I didn't upload for three weeks or so and that's basically because of two things so mainly it was because Rising Hub was offline pretty frequently the servers were being attacked so it was really rare to get in game to record anything because of the server status and also the game didn't get any updates during that time either because it was the priority for the team to basically hold off on updates to try and fix the server problems instead and I also wasn't feeling very well for a few weeks. My voice wasn't very good at all. So even if there was something major to make a video about a few weeks ago, then I wouldn't have been able to do commentary for anything I uploaded, which as you guys know, isn't my style. I very rarely make videos without my own commentary in them. So yeah, it wouldn't have felt right. And I don't even know if you guys would have liked a video like that. So once again, things have changed with what the main focus of the video is. This was originally going to just be about a delayed Easter update, but recently there was a message posted on the news section of the Rising Hub Discord, and I'll read it out. So it says, Russia has recently blocked millions of IP addresses in a battle against the Telegram app, and due to the fact that Rising Hub's database is located in Russia, our services are now temporarily offline. As of now, we don't know when our services can be back up, but we are working on it. So, yeah, guys, this is pretty awful timing, I know, with the new players joining recently and the fact that the Discord actually reached 20,000 members a few weeks ago, or actually it was a few days ago. And I don't know too much about this blocking of IPs in Russia, but I do know it's affected games such as Guild Wars as well, which I believe is blocked over there as well now. So, at the time of me making this video, the server list for Rising Hub is actually still up. But there are a lot less servers on there. There's, I think I can only see about seven right now. And according to Pirate from the team, the reason there are still some servers up is because they still have some IPs. But those are apparently going to be blocked soon as well. But it's not the end for Battleford Heroes, guys. Rising Hub are focusing on a workaround to this problem. And in the meantime, there's another Battleford Heroes project we can play called Custom Link. Now, I've mentioned this in the past, and I did actually play it before I discovered Rising Hub. So I'll leave the Discord information and the site in the comments and description. And as far as I know, when you start Custom Link, your heroes are automatically put at level 30. And there are a few more servers as well as a score leaderboard. So it has got a few things going for it. And yeah, I, I'm guessing this will just be something that we can play in the meantime while Rising Cubs just sorting stuff out. Alright guys, so that was it for the major issue and new focus of the video. I just wanted to get that out of the way and mention it at the start because I do still want to go over what I already planned to do, which is to talk about the Easter update. So I completely understand if you guys just want to stop the video now and go straight to Custom Link, but I do still want to cover this since otherwise I'll miss out on talking about it. Okay, so... First of all, the update added the new map, Oceanfront Onslaught, which is a map I did a video on a couple of months ago. It's now official and on normal servers, so not just the testing server, so it's available for everyone. I did play on it briefly since the update, but I can't say I noticed any changes to it. But I didn't get around the whole map when I did play, so it's possible I missed something new that was added on the map somewhere, but the patch notes didn't mention anything else, so yeah. We got some new clothing sets which were made by Bixie and they look pretty good. They should hopefully be in some of the gameplay as well in the video. And yeah, I'm pretty sure they're reskins of individual items <clears throat> that are already in the game. But they're reskins done well, I think, and they do look pretty good and unique. My favourite new items have to be the leather jacket for the Royals as well as the gloves because they look like you have the skeleton hands from the National set, which is pretty cool. There were also some other random items made as well, just individually, that weren't parts of complete sets, like a shirt for the band Paradox, and also a shirt with the Rising Hub logo on it, and it's just nice to see more content making its way into the game. 
So for the Easter theme of the update, the egg widgets return to the game and can be purchased with hero points from the store. And when you have the egg, you obviously get unlimited uses of it. However, you're missing out on an extra ability or an ability level increase because obviously you had to use an ability point to get it in the first place. And I think the payoff is good for commandos, but not for other classes really because commandos always got more use out of the eggs anyway, using them as troop traps instead of putting points into that to focus on other things, which you could do in this case. But also, and more commonly, was using them with troop traps to do massive damage. I'm not sure if the widgets are only supposed to be in the store for a limited time because of the Easter theme, but I'd just say get them if you can, just in case, and obviously if you want to try them out. And just know that when you reset your abilities, the egg is removed from your stuff and you have to buy it again because otherwise that would bypass the system, obviously. Other widgets got added to the cake throw widget, which was always fun to use in unranked, which is pretty harmless anyway. The damage isn't that high and you need to hit someone directly with it close range as well. Also, the chair smacker widget was added and it actually got a buff. It was quite weak and didn't have that much of a range, but um, yeah, you pretty much had to be point blank. But now it does more damage and it has better range than before, so that's pretty good. Speaking of widgets, the punch widget actually got removed, which is good and bad in my opinion. It was fun to use and I did want to make a video using it at some point. But at the same time, it was basically giving a low level of blasting strike to any class. And with the unlimited uses, it was pretty annoying to deal with at times, especially if a lot of people had it equipped at one time in the same server. Now, I'm not sure if they removed for good now or if maybe they're going to get a nerf or some sort of change. But I guess we'll have to see in the future at some point. It would be nice to see them return. Maybe they could just, uh, you know, change them slightly to make them not as good. A new client intro got added which uses different sounds and it's nowhere near as loud as it was before thankfully. Um, I always had to mute my sound when launching the game and sometimes I forgot and it was a bit painful so yeah. Another small change is that some of the golden weapons like the golden super cheeser and back scratcher got some black added to them. Like the original golden guns so the golden AK for example has that and I think it's a decent change and most of them look a bit better now. There were also some weapon changes, some weapons got nerfed and buffed, so the major one and I think the most important one for you guys as well to mention is that the laser machine guns now don't work with frenzy fire, which I always thought was a good idea to make them nowhere near as crazy back in the day, along with ideas like reducing the fire rate and stuff like that. So basically, if you use frenzy fire with the laser and another MG, it'll switch to your other MG, and if you switch back to the laser with the ability still active, it won't work, it won't heal you, it won't give you an accuracy boost, so the ability pretty much doesn't recognise the laser as a machine gun anymore. That's how it works. The blow lamp weapon, the blow torch, now works properly because it didn't before and as well as getting a damage buff it can be used with burning bullets which is pretty unique because it's not an SMG obviously and the damage is really good. The jeeps that you, well if you attack a jeep they just go down really quickly and it's even more of a force against knifing commandos than it already was and in general I just think the weapon's pretty fun to use and quite rewarding. The side feeder SMG got a damage buff in its best range and also a critical hit chance increase. Now I agree with the damage buff because the weapon has recoil to it and it was always pretty underpowered I guess. But I'm not sure why it got an even higher crit chance because it already used to crit pretty often. But I don't mind it too much and hopefully it means more people are going to decide to try it out and not overlook it. So yeah, finally guys, the closed beta pistols that I covered at the start of this year got a nerf and I'm glad to be honest because I felt they were way too good and being able to use two of them especially was just complete overkill. So yeah guys, that's all of the main stuff and things I liked from this update, things I thought I should bring up. Like I said, thanks again for the feedback on the last video. I kind of expected it to get you know, a decent amount of feedback and and, uh, and all that because obviously it was calling out a big YouTuber but it still did better than I thought it would so yeah, thanks for that. Obviously thanks again for 3,000 subscribers and whenever there's new information about Rising Hub's progress I'll be sure to make a video on it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.